Well, hello everybody. Uh, I've been for the last month, last 30 days or so, I've been dry aging a full rack of uh, a ribeye loin. And uh, that's what this video is gonna be about, that dry aging process. And then at the end, I'm going to compare a difference between a wet aged ribeye and a dry aged ribeye. Well, here's the comparison of the side by side. This one, as you can tell, is dry aged. This one is a brand new one that's, that's wet aged, just cryovac straight from the market. But let me show you what we did uh, to get it from here to here. And uh, I'll show you the bags that we used, uh, specially made bags and whatnot. All right, first off, to do this yourself, you're gonna need some type of a, a vax, vacuum sealer. I happen to have a food saver, and this is the Game Saver Sports Plus. So uh, that's the one that I use, and it does work wonderfully with these bags. Uh, the bags themselves, uh, as you can see, I've got, uh, you know, they come in different sizes. This one's for short loins and briskets, and it's, it's a larger bag. They have a Suprimal, Suprimal bag, and as you can see, it's uh, Umai, drybagsteak.com is the website. Uh, just drybagsteak.com is, is the website. And they've got plenty of nice videos up there and forums, and, and they'll answer any questions. They're very, very customer friendly. They've got a kit. If you don't already have a food saver type vac sealer, uh, they will sell you one. It's, it's a snorkel type, which works, does, it's, works really well with these bags. Um, this one is not a snorkel type. So what I need to use is what they call a, a vac mouse. I think they call it. Yeah, it's a vac mouse. And basically all it is is uh, uh, it's just a little, little piece like this that goes in the end of the bag and it helps to get all of the air out you know, it helps vacuum all the air out without it sealing first so uh, this, this you need one of these if you don't buy their kit that's what I'm trying to say all right let's cut this bad boy up here and just uh, just to show you kind of up close if I can get you to see it there there you go 130 bucks for this uh, select grade and I guess 16.75 uh, 16.72 pounds Got it for about eight bucks a pound, a little less than eight bucks a pound. But uh, again, this one is not as good as the original one that I did. So I'm curious to see how Select does when you dry age it too. All right, let's cut that bad boy open here. you want to do is just dry this as best you can before putting it in that that bag to dry age it and you probably could wash this too but uh, I don't feel like dragging it inside the, the wife's in there making some bread right now so I don't feel like messing with that all right so there we go that's what it looks like when you're finished with it and um, we'll get one of these bags here. Let's see. Yep, that covers it. All right, and the first thing you want to do is take this opening and roll about, about three inches, four inches or so. And that way you don't get uh, any kind of a juice on the edges of the bag, which would uh, hinder, hinder its sealing. Okay, and then you just kind of see if you can work this loin into the bag. I'm just going to take a little needle in here, bear with me. There we go. Okay. And the next thing you want to do is try to, try to pull the uh, loin over into one corner. Because eventually what's going to happen when you suck all the air out, uh, this after after two or three days this bag is designed to form a bond with the meat itself on the surface Which is what you've seen on this other one So I'm just going to try to shimmy 
Shimmy and shake this thing all the way down to this back corner here. Like that. Seal this. Seal. Again, always let that cool off. Okay. Spin around through the other corner. Alright, get another one of these. And I will say it did take a couple of times on the very first one I did too, simply because I wasn't used to this thing. Okay, so I need to go to about there. See. But again, it did take a couple of tries. Cut this down a little bit. Not much. Maybe to there. There my scissors. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Slide that back a little bit. Try this again. All that air out of there. All out. Oh, she's getting tight now. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And it's okay if you can't get it totally sealed, but do try to get 80 to 90% done. The more of this bag that's in contact with the meat, the better the aging will go for you. Yeah, this one's looking real good. Much better. Nice. We're nice and tight seal. Alright, we'll go ahead and seal it. Now, it's always a good idea to come back and do a precautionary second shield uh, seal. Sorry. It's always a real good idea to do that. So let's, let's do that. kind of put it below this other one right here. Yeah, 
And once this is done, you're going to let it sit for a few minutes just to make sure that uh, it does stay sealed so that you don't have any, any leaks. And you shouldn't, but you just never know. Now then, again, just let this sit for a few minutes. Make sure it does stay sealed up. And again, you're not going to be able to get 100% coverage where the bag is in contact with the meat. But if you can get a good 80-90% of it, that should be enough. Alright, this is how it looks after six days. Well, this is day 12. As you can see, it's really getting dark now. Oh boy, I can't wait. That's, that's some good looking stuff right there. Alright, this is what it looks like on day 18. Getting real dark. Looks like it's starting to form a little bit of crust over here on the outside, which is expected. So, just over halfway. Still looking great. We are at day 24. But it feels really, really hard too. That outer coating should be like tough leather when I uh, remove the bag. And the, but the bag is adhering to the, the uh, surface of the meat too. So anyway, a few more days we'll be pulling it out. All right, now once you just finish bagging it like I just showed you, what you're going to want to do is put it in your fridge uh, anywhere from between 21 and 28 days or so. And then the air needs to circulate around. So you're, if you have glass shelves in your fridge, don't sit this directly on the glass shelf. Put it in a, a jelly roll pan like this with a little iron uh, wire rack in there, like a, a cooling rack. And then sit this on top of that cooling rack so that the air can go all the way around it. And this, this is hard as a board right here. Really, really hard. Um, no, you can't really tell, but uh, this this is the fat side, and it uh, kind of looks like shoe leather, to be honest with you. And it does have a little pungent flavor to it, uh, I mean a uh, pungent uh, smell to it. Let's see what this is going to look like. You can see how it's kind of stuck to that bag? That's what you're looking for. Alright, now what you want to do is cut all this outside off. It's not going to be very good tasting. Let's see where to start out on this on this bad boy here. Get my big knife over here. Pretty red inside. I think what I'm probably going to do, let me just uh, see if I can make just an even cut here. Sorry, my dogs going nuts if you can hear them. All right, can y'all see the uh, how red that is on the inside? Hope you can. It's really, really pretty. Mm-hmm. Well, it's nice and soft and tender too. Let's see if I can cut y'all one of these pretty, pretty steaks here. All right, I'm gonna go about an inch and three quarter and that's gonna be about there. So let's see if we can cut us a nice one here. That's what you've been waiting for right there. Nice ribeye. There. Try to 
split this one a little bit here. Side edge here off. Okay. Now let me cut a little bit of this off here. And uh, just know ahead of time, too, when you do dry age, you lose about, I think, 18 to 20 percent of the uh, moisture content. I'm gonna grill these babies up tonight. Some of them anyway, I'm gonna probably freeze some. Like I said, I'll let you know how it freezes. All right, so there you go. Dry aged ribeye, about an inch and three quarter, two inch thick. See all that nice marbling in there, and. See how that outer shell just uh, was covering all this really, really good meat. All right, boys and girls. Here you go. That's some good looking stuff right there, isn't it? Look how beautiful that red is. Really, really good looking. Mm-hmm. Trying to get some sunshine on it here so y'all can see it really good. Nice marbling. Nice aged. Get that one in the sun too. There you go. Just gorgeous, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Get a nice close-up on that. And oh man. Nice ribeyes. Side of a 14, almost 15 pound loin rib roast thing there I uh, I got uh, looks like eight eight steaks and granted they're uh, they're almost two inches thick so that's the way I like them we're gonna cook them up later or some of them anyway all right let's we got this grill hot here let's clean the grates just going to uh, put a little bit of oil on these there we go light coat and in the back back here I've got some uh, don't know if you can see it but I got some some oak chips all right these are those uh, get up here a little bit there you go these are those aged steaks I'm gonna grill up four of them mighty fine looking stuff I right, also got uh, to compare the flavor but this is a prime steak let me show you what it looks like There you go. Nice marbling. I'm trying to get it where you can see it. The sun's kind of messing with me here. There you go. What I'm gonna do is uh, put some of this uh, chop house steak seasoning stuff on here. There you go. It's mainly salt and pepper, but it's got a few extra things. I'm going to season these the same because I want to get a, a nice comparison between a wet aged prime, again wet aged prime, dry aged uh, natural. 
are a little bit better than choice. It's gonna be some good stuff. So anyway, let me finish this. We'll be right back before we put it on the grill. All right, I am gonna throw a little bit of olive oil on here too. Not much. Just a little coating of it. That should give us some nice nice grill marks all right let me show you real quick the dry aged is on the left the fresh uh, wet aged is on the right the one on the right is prime and uh, this is the, the health uh, what do you call it natural what do you call it anyway you see how much darker this is than the uh, than the prime the dry aged just thought I'd show you all that comparison it is much darker. We're fixing to grill them up. See what the difference in flavor is. All right, I've got four of these steaks, the uh, the drays. Got four of them. I'm gonna grill up. I'm gonna do these first because uh, the wife doesn't like hers on the rear side. Back over here. Here we go. I'm going to save these two for my comparison on my taste here. So we're just going to let these uh, go for a couple minutes and flip them. Let them go a couple more minutes and then I'll set them on this top rack over here. Alright, these have been on there a couple more minutes. Nice and seared up. I'm going to stick these over here on this top rack. And I got this uh, this side over here turned way down low to. All right, I still got smoke going on. It's gonna be a comparison between these two steaks. Again, the prime, dry aged, and uh, the, the dry aged just a little bit thicker, probably two inches. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, this uh, this prime. Yeah, I had the butcher cut it one and three quarter inch, so they're pretty close. I'll tell you what, man, that's some nice looking meat right there. Anyway, throw these on the grill. We're gonna see how they're gonna do. There we go. All right, so we need to turn these 20 degrees or so. And that's just what we're going to do. Alright, so I've got a little bit of uh, butter. And there you go. You don't see that. Anyway, butter, garlic, salt, pepper. Just kind of melting that down. I'm going to base, the, base that on my steaks. Alright, let's flip these bad boys over here. And I'm going to kind of do a, a reverse sear on these. So I'm not expecting very much in the way of cross hash marks on those. Well, I think he's about done. Now it's time to sear them. What you call the reverse sear right here. Uh, sear them on each side of them, finish cooking. All right, let's see how this is going to taste. <clears throat> this is the dry aged. This is the regular uh, wet age. Let's see what we got. There you go. Kind of a medium. Taking that bite right there. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. Is that too close? There you go. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
That's some tender meat. Goodness gracious. If y'all can do this, it's worth it. Give it a shot. Dry aging. I'm gonna taste the other one now. Hang on. All right, so we tried the uh, dry aged one, which is really, really good. Oh man. I don't know. There you go. It's still red. It's got some good uh, good juice left in it. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Alright. Let's compare that to the prime wet aged. Straight down the middle here. There you go, kind of a medium. There you go. It's not rare, but uh, here you go. Let's give it a shot. And again, this is prime. Hmm. Now hang on. Get another one of these dry ones. I'm dry aged. Okay. This dry aged. This wet aged. Let's do the wet aged first. Some good stuff. I'm telling you, a pump. If you can afford it, that's some good stuff. Get it thick too. Mm. Goodness. All right. Try a little bit of this. Age. Oh man, goodness. Some more flavor on the dry age. And uh, it is more tender, even than the prime. Dry age, it's worth it. Definitely is. I'm gonna enjoy this. And I got another one, I'm doing another 30 days here, so. I love my steaks. All right, so we uh, we're done with this. Uh, well, I'm not quite done with it, but uh, it's some good stuff here. Tell you, dry aged food, dry aged beef. Goodness, I want to thank uh, Have to Fish. Have to Fish 8780. Check out his uh, his YouTube channel. He gave me the idea for this. I'll put all the links that you need to know below the video. Trust me though, dry steaks, uh, dry aged steaks, that's the way to go. It's good stuff. Y'all should give it a shot. You, you should. You gotta have patience. But it's really, really good. It's, it's worth it. It's really worth it. Alright, we'll see y'all next time. Cheers. And, uh, and thanks again, uh, Half the Fish 8780. Appreciate it. And uh, JB, hey man, it's good stuff. Age.